right, hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ten Forward Weekly. Uh, my name is uh, Mike Fainham, also known as Ambassador Kel, and uh, I am your uh, community manager. And joining me today, at least for our first section, is Hector Ortiz. Hey, guys, doing? How you doing, Hector? Uh, doing good, great, good. Man. You yeah. feeling good after that sprint from the <laughs> walking <laughs> trail to here? Yeah, I'm so sorry about that, guys. No, no, it's fine. It was, it's fine. It we, uh, bad, yeah. uh, Hector got the meeting notification while he was about <laughs> 20, 10 minutes walk, a walk away. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we're starting a little late today, but that is all right. Um, cool. So, yeah, um, we're here to talk uh, to you about the uh, Farang, which is the new um, Fakiri ship this year, uh, which is super exciting. You want to talk a little bit about the process? I know last year was kind of the first big... Uh, like super fiery heavy metal know, security right? ship we made now we had to kind of expand on that how did you guys approach that Again, idea uh, yeah as, as you mentioned it was a continuation of the of our previous ship we wanted to stay with the um with the kind of a boat boat motif all these uh barge yeah uh, stuff like that and so i, I originally what i wanted was to create a uh when I'm gonna pop over here so we can look at some of the art you said oh. keep talking okay <laughs> so so what I did was I took uh, the inside. Imagine you take a boat and yeah. you turn it inside out, uh-huh. and that's that's that, that was my base for for constructing this, this okay. spaceship. That's yeah, that's one one of the early concepts. Okay, yeah, I didn't actually know you did three D modeling concept. Now that's really cool. Yeah, I have to. Is is the best way to go? Is the best yeah. way to go? Otherwise, otherwise we risk doing stuff that we really don't like. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> so you sent me uh, you sent me a bunch of different uh, concepts here. I know what the final render is, but um, if you want to talk about uh, is this an early version of the ship? It was an it? early version. Okay. And then gladly we gladly got rid of it because it started <laughs> to look like a shoe. Uh, so <laughs> it does. I yeah. Okay, I see the shoe now. Although yeah. honestly, I would wear the hell out of that shoe. No. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it started to look too much like a shoe. And it had a lot of, lot of sales, right? Yeah. And I had issues with, with the, the sales because suddenly it makes everything look kind of small. Yeah. It I looks everything kind of small. So we had to make a couple of decisions. Okay, let's get rid of them. Okay. So this was, what was the original thought behind this kind of turned up nose? The same thing. It's, it's a boat. It's okay. like, a, like a barge, like a Viking barge, mm. you know, how they used to have mm. the, the, the dragon on the front. Okay, yeah. So we were, we were playing because I don't know who, who said it. Was it Ian? I don't know who said it. Let's put a skull. Let's put the the, the gigantic metal skull yeah. because you guys have to remember that this ship is a, like a fun project. Every time <laughs> we do a Fakiri ship, that's the ship we kind of go crazy about it. We put the effect. We put that because we want to have fun. It's, yeah. This is a fun ship, not to take. It's not like a Federation ship that you take yeah, you have it to have, seriously. You, we have to make it like no. totally, completely right to the show. Or yes, like that. this 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 one is is fun. It's fire. It's it's all over the top. It's excessive. So it's over overbuilt. Yeah, um, I'll so, just to show you another picture here. So this is then. Look at that. Yeah. So this is this is now after the shoe concept. We moved on to this drawing. Yeah, actually, that that was originally that's what we had in mind. Okay. But I started expanding on that, and it ended up looking like a shoe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so yeah. <laughs> so that, that's uh, that's how it used to be. A lot of sales, and somebody I think it was Donnie that mentioned, "Oh, it looks like a Java Sparcher." Oh, damn it! Now, now, okay, that's it. <laughs> Got throw it out, throw it all out, start over. Out into the Starlight Pit with you. Oh, with the with the sales. So yeah. I we decided to put the sales on the meat, on the meat, almost like a like a shield. Yeah, like an armor on the on, on the belly of the ship, and eliminated them from the top. Okay, the top is now more more exposed. Now we have this ridge, which then leads us to this kind of uh, design, right? Yeah, it's similar to that. The thing is that what I did is that I turned that that front section upside down. Okay, it's the same upside down. Instead of look, looking like a boat. Now it looks like an upside down boat. <laughs> in, in the final design, if you notice, yeah. you're gonna notice when you go to the next thing. Yeah, so I'll so, go to the, the final render here. This yeah, is your, this is your fully See, painted, beautiful upside render. down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. So, so, so I, and we decided to put the ribbing. Yeah. So it's, it, it goes again with the motif of the inside out ship. We we put all the ribs. Yeah. But we were like, okay, what else can we put? Oh, let's put some fire and stuff that resemble sails. Yeah. That's why you have all those triangles pointing back because that kind of remem- 
brings the illusion of sailing. So yeah. You know. And I love this concept here of uh, that you saw even in the earliest drawings of this. It's kind of like the Viking oars coming out the yes. side. That's yes. really, really cool. The original, uh, I think, what was the name of that ship? The, the one that looks like a train. Like the Fakiri ship. Yeah. It looks like a train. I know what you're talking about. I don't remember the name. We wanted to, to keep something of that, and those, those the oars were, were in that ship originally. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, why don't we look at her in the game, and we can talk about it a little more. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. So this is... Not her in the game. Oh, there it is. Okay. I just seen so this yeah, a little she bit. Is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, is that cool? I always get surprised because these things. I, I this is the first time I see this. Yeah, you've never seen it in the game as, before. As it, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Because we gotta get like a, a regular meeting that just like shows you your stuff done and in the game. <laughs> it's so fa the the pacing is super fast. It is. I just release this thing and move to the next thing. So you told me there was a skull on this somewhere. I don't remember where to look for it. On the top. Oh, there it is. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. That's amazing. See, <laughs> yeah. So the thing is that all that part in the front is supposed to resemble the case of, of uh, what's the name of the, the Klingon hell? The get Gethor? Uh, Grethor, yeah. Yes. It's, 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 it's supposed to resemble a little bit the entrance. I think, hold on. I think we're, I think, just looking at this up close, I think Jet left the uh, one of the shields on it. Um, yeah. Okay, there we go. Now it doesn't look quite so soapy. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's why we put we decided to put the the the, the skull there. It also looks yeah, super metal, it's super cool. So uh, and that's also the uh, the skull. I don't know if you know this. Uh, one of its abilities. Let me see if I can just do it real quick. That's right. Uh, it oh fires that skull. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. I know. Uh, I know. Yeah. Oh, so what yeah. was that? It was a shield or something. I think going that's on? Um, an effect based off of the when you use the console, uh, it does that. So yeah, so this is, um, you know, Ian's unfortunately out sick today, so he can't uh, talk to us about the process of uh, of taking this guy into 3D space. But since you did a 3D model of it initially, you know, how does it change from your initial concept to kind of what? Not what too ends much, up being? actually. Not too much. That, that's that's pretty. That's it's pretty spot on to what yeah. the, to what we had in the concept. Cool. Can, can you move it? Can I see the the flames or oh, something? Oh yeah, of course. Um, hold on, let me make sure that we don't have uh, engines with a visual on them. Okay, should be okay. All right, all right. Let's do this. Full steam. Whoa! <laughs> oh god, that's still the coolest thing in the universe. <laughs> I gotta get me one of these ships. Oops, I just ran into the starbase. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, I had no idea that about. Uh, I had no idea if Ian was actually going to put the fire on the sides like yeah. the, the crazy. Oh, he, he did it on the, the, bottom, the bottom too. too. Ah. Oh my god, that's amazing! I, I know oh, this thing looks so cool. I thought he was space. gonna do something, but but this is the thing. I give these people the concept, and they 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 have their own liberties, and yeah. they surprise me with stuff like this. This is really. Well, cool. look at that thing. Look, can you break it? It still does the the the, the explosions when you break. Uh, if you, oh, you want to blow it up. Let's see. No, no, no. The wait, stop. Oh, come to stop. Ah, because Ian did something that where the, the engines kind of started bursting. Oh yeah, like misfiring or something. I oh, like that. Is that uh, what you're talking about? Yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Doing so like awesome. a like a like a dragster. That's awesome. Yeah. And then yeah, it's still even got the side and bottom flames when it's just going at normal impulse speed too. Yeah. God, that is such a metal freaking ship. Yeah, super metal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's you, awesome. if you're gonna do a, 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 a ship for space demons, you better be metal, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of people are saying they see uh, uh, chaos and corn influences in this from 40k, which man. you know, Hector and I have been known to play a few rounds of 40K Kill Team here and there. Is such an influential thing for us. Once, once, once it touches you, that's it. Yeah. You can't get out of that gothic design. Yeah. As, well, as soon as you have the chance, you apply it somewhere. Yeah. Oh, of course. I love the like mini, the upside down city on the bottom of this. Right. Thing too. Because that's... many people, many people here wanted the verticality. Yeah. But that's the really problem cool. with verticality in, in our game is that once you put it, you, you put something so vertical like this. Yeah. You never know what's the arc, what's the firing arc. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's difficult. So that's why many ships tend to be forward like this, facing yeah. like a, like an arrow, so people know exactly where, where, where they're heading to. Which is actually, um, uh, you know, it's part of our spaceship design language too. We just kind of expect ships to be like kind of sleek and, and like, it's, it's and so it's always interesting when there's something, because you don't need aerodynamics in space. No, so. you don't need it, but it's, 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 it's more like a, like a physical need, because yeah. you need to see directionality. You have to have this directionality. Yeah. I wish we could do like really thick ship, but right. nobody's going to be able to fly them properly. 
It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Well, um, thank you very much for talking us through that, Hector. I hear our next guest outside. So I I'm know, they're you... outside, yeah. and they are on time. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. No, it's okay. Thank you very much for But thanks wait. for coming by and chatting with us about the design. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, enjoy the show. <laughs> All right, Thomas Jet, you're up. Let me get this. Uh, I think you're closer to me. Uh, we'll find out soon, though. Jet and Thomas. Yep. Ha ha! Victory is mine. Uh, some people are saying the stream is a little glitchy. Let me see. Uh, no, we're on 720. I'm not sure what's going on with that, guys. Sorry. Um, there is a there is a thing with XSplit, which is the program we use, where um, if uh, certain internal teams who are working on uh, the game that we don't talk about uh, are do, are recording their play tests. Uh, they um, set theirs up to the highest video quality, and it affects every instance of XSplit on our account. So Weird. sometimes I miss that, uh, and we end up streaming at 1080, which just crashes some people's systems. But uh, all right, so um, we have had many um, uh, many things uh, people imploring us in chat uh, this week. We just won't talk about any numbers at all, so yeah. we won't crash the stream. <laughs> <laughs> just no numbers, yeah. none whatsoever. Um, okay. Yeah. No, 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 we can talk about numbers. Uh, so this is the Farang. Um, Thomas, you, you almost, had nothing to do with you this. You almost said a number. Four. No. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> None is, can be... None is a number, that's true. Can be described as a in numerical terms. As, that's true. That's very yeah. true. All right, uh, I'm going to pop up some combat jets so you can talk about the design of this ship. Uh, let's do Intermediate Combat Encounter 1. I don't okay. know what I'm fighting. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's probably a bunch of Borg ships, unless you changed it. Um, and I'm going to launch the Souls of the Damned to come and help me out. Yep. Uh, so these hangar pets were uh, <laughs> so much <fun>. really interesting <laughs> and really fun to get to work on. I they are certainly among our most unique hangar pets. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure they can they just have that title, but yeah, I think that possible. sounds right. Um, I'm gonna fire a flaming skull at these yeah, guys now. I, Excuse me. <laughs> I commented on Reddit earlier about all the um, interesting things they use because, well, it's if you look at the model, like it's just this like disembodied half of a person made of like fire floating through space yep mm -hmm. which doesn't translate to you know shield arrays shooting <laughs> photon torpedoes or any of the Did, uh, normal ian stuff richards make but those? they just breathe fire yeah ian richards made all these effects okay yeah oops i blew up so yeah you picked it well intermediately difficult encounter and, you, uh, didn't and i press am any intermediately buttons. skilled <laughs> And it expected you to press buttons. <laughs> I pressed lots of buttons. I used powers and everything. About the... There was a term I heard recently about... Um, well, it was about Magic the Gathering, the card game, which I mm -hmm. can talk about. And mm -hmm. it was like a reference to actions per turn. But actions per second is, is I think, where they stole it from. And it's definitely relevant in this game. But anyway... Um, All right. Uh, we're going to fight some click it yeah, would be gonna, funny, but and also confusing. Yeah, but you know these guys currently these guys are let's uh, kill some Klingons. Yeah, that's that's their job. Yeah. Stovacore Express. Choo -choo. Uh, all right, we're gonna set active combat in Zoner. Uh, I'll do basic encounter three rather than yeah okay. murdering myself here. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is the multi wave one, so that's cool. Um, cool. I had fun setting all of this map up, but I also had we fun setting it. this this ship up and. So the hangar pets, um, as I mentioned, they don't use like phaser beams and photon torpedoes because that wouldn't make sense. What they do is they have claw swipes, which are very <laughs> literally what it sounds like. You you get to watch as they fly towards something and then just swipe at it with the, their claws. And, <laughs> and then they breathe fire on them too, they, right? They have an ability called flame breath. It's um, a space flamethrower out of their mouth. How did that, this, so none of, all of this happened completely without my participation, so like, <laughs> I don't know how the models were made. I don't know. Like, are they just character models scaled down? Like, so I don't know the answer to that question because them. those are existing NPC assets. Okay. That have been in game since um, a longer than I've been. Okay. Well, no, that's what I was asking. Like, there are yeah. assets that we, but you were able to scale them down to hangar pet size because that's, they. That's how they're scaled in the game. Like, oh, the dreadnought just launches these things called tortured souls, and that's uh -huh. what they look like. Uh -huh. And claw swipe is their ability. Um, so these wait, these were hangar pets that were already in the game on another ship? They, they weren't hangar pets. The, there's an, a Fakiri Dreadnought, the NPC version, uh, launches those in oh, varying okay. sizes. Oh, okay. And they will right, run at you, and they will use Claw Slipe. And mm -hmm. they're difficult to see. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously. So we added the 
smoke trails that I mean, <laughs> would really traditionally helps. call them engine trails, mm-hmm. but they don't have engines. Right. They are <laughs> lower torso <laughs> trails. Yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. So that, that way you can tell where your hangar pets or someone else's hangar pets are. And um, they got some other abilities to be flashier and also because... Uh, their ability to make it within point blank of a ship was not always guaranteed beforehand. Um, <laughs> so now it's a little more guaranteed? Yeah, and also, like, the Flame Breath is there and the Psionic Shockwave on um, the, the Fleet and the Lithium Store versions so that they have something to do before they make it all the way there. <laughs> um, oh my god, them flying at that Dreadnought looks so cool! <laughs> yeah, and they have an ability called Ferocious Charge, which uh, I had to explain to QA that you won't see in the combat log, because all it does is, hey... Is my target way too far away from me? Yes. Okay, I'm going to dash at them really, really fast. Nice. Which yeah. is probably what you're seeing right there. That's right, awesome. Thing is so that way they can range, so actually hope to, to close in with them and do things. I like uh, I like how the the carrier was like trying to shoot at them and missing. And... All right, so tell me about this this amazing skull So thing. if you look at the ship, I, I hope this was pointed out in the it art was. conversation. It was. It the was. The skull on the ship. Um, yes. It's yeah. right so here. We ship... looked at it up close. Yeah, good. It even looked good with the discovery shield you'd left on this ship. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I thought I disabled visuals on that one point. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I don't blame um, you. I blame society. <laughs> well, we do live in one. <laughs> yeah, we live in a society. We, we live in today's society. Yeah, so, so I just noticed that the, uh, the Souls of the Damned have uh, one more level than uh, ships normally do. Do they really? Yeah, is they that have not five stars. F- yes, that is what they normally have. That's oh. what all hangar pets normally oh, have. Oh, the ones that I've flown had four. Well, <laughs> they, they, they just so die before they get to five. Slightly under the hood, XP is controlled in the same location for every single hangar pet and works the same way on every single hangar pet, save for the House Mokai fighters that are... The, the one of those that um, slowly die over time, those don't get healed when they, they go up a level. But they they all do the same thing for XP. I'm just gonna pull up their stats here while, yeah. while we're talking about them. Um, so yeah, um, so so the skull that your ship gets to launch from its console, yes, uh, does this. It does fire damage to everything it passes through, and as it goes along, um, it's find it. that button. Uh, open yeah. the maw of Grethor. Yeah, and as it goes along, as it mentions, it summons more lost souls of Grethor, which are. <laughs> Very similar to the hangar pet version, except they're not hangar pets, is um, a summary of that. Okay. Um, so they, they, they act exactly like your hangar pets, except they're not hangar pets and you can't control them. Right, and they don't count as hangar pets for like Starship Fates that care about hangar pets or things like that. Okay. So kind of like the um, the console we released that summons a bunch of Discovery Fighters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of okay. like that, except this one's accompanied by a giant flaming skull in space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a key difference, yeah. to be sure. And yeah. also they... They're very different from, like, you know, the, the squadrons and that with all of their beams and all of their, like, screen expanding. And this is <sighs> flame breath and all this nonsense. Um, um, Thomas, I think this is a question for you. Uh, Sentinel 1964 wants to know, um, does this ship's existence exclude the uh, us making a T6 Carfi at some point? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, there we go. I, I think... That sounds Certainly like a very confirmed there are shrug. Any definitive plans at the moment? Because I can confirm for you that we have no solid plans for most ships at the moment. Um, <laughs> look, I only have, have a solid plan oh, for the few ships I'm we working have on. One solid plan. <laughs> I'm photoshopping something for it right now. Oh yes. my god, you guys, I'm I assume I, that is the thing I am working on. I don't on. want to, probably. And, and we can't say anything more. Yep, That's it. Don't That's don't all we can get say. But I really want to tell you all, but I don't want this to get is, fired This has more. been Thomas's yeah. baby. That's all I'll say. This yeah. has been yeah. Thomas's baby from the beginning, and since, I'm very excited like, about it. Since, like, June. Yeah. We've been, no, actually since March, I think. Like, uh, It's super exciting. Right. And right now, I think we're going to talk about the super exciting yeah, ship that yeah. breathes mm-hmm. fire. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I know we'll get to talk about <laughs> yep. that project. Uh, Pax right. Federatica says, since the, sh- the race the ship be- belongs to was created by the Dominion, isn't this technically a Dominion ship? No, because the Dominion created the Fakiri, but then the Fakiri went off and did their own thing and built it themselves. Yeah, the Dominion were not happy with the Fakiri, as I understand it, in part due to lack of control. Yeah. Which resulted in them building wild, Giant wacky- metal Viking <laughs> ships that shoot flaming skulls. Yeah. <laughs> Or like the giant flame trails the ship leaves everywhere, which is yeah. all right. Super so, cool. Jet, talk to us a little bit about how you built this ship and what this ship's kind of purpose is. So, you hear me, baby? Hold together. <laughs> <laughs> 
So numbers. So the important thing about the ship is it's comprised entirely of screen of stream crashing numbers, which cause everything to explode. <laughs> and Mike to try to get me fired. Uh. Um, no. So this ship was. Uh, we had a good couple of themes to build off of. For example, there was last year's ship, which uh, was another Hector concept, as I recall, and mm-hmm. it was metal Vikings in space. Yep. And that extends very. Um, very far. All of the Fakiri ships are named based on names of Viking ships, which was a really interesting thing to learn and go start working on. Um, and then obviously there's the aesthetic. Um, but Fire in Space and Klingon Hell has been largely my inspiration for everything I've put on <laughs> these. Um, Into the Maw of Grethor is uh, very literally uh, take, showing that off. But then even this is just... Um, the starship trade on the ship is... Uh, you launch hangar pets and it explodes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> with hellish fire that confuses things because that's a natural reaction to <laughs> seeing... <laughs> We're in space! This. How, is this? How is this possible? <laughs> I'm so confused! Questions. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Fakiri play into making you think a lot of things are happening that shouldn't be, and that's very yeah. literally confusing. Right. And... Um, whether it confuses you because the bridge crew has no idea what's going on or the ship sensors don't think any of the readings make sense like eh, that's up to you to figure out why you're confused but it definitely happens um, yeah uh now a bunch of people in chat are complaining at us because this build you made for the ship does not include narrow sensor bands which is one of the things that sets off the trade mm-hmm. what was your reasoning behind making chat angry jet mm-hmm. why so, did you make our player base angry uh, 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 jet here's my reasoning for making chat angry um i had i'll what I would summarize is, I'm trying new things on my computer that make not everything go exactly the way I want it to, and instead of the multiple hours I normally have to put ship builds together, I made two ship builds for Mike in the space of 35 minutes. And we're very grateful. And so not everything has the same amount of uh, thought-out, perfectly planned synergies as I might normally include. And so for this ship, what I was looking to do was mainly put a lot of tactical powers on it, supported by some engineering powers with a photonic officer set up to make it tick, and um, paying attention to what exactly the starship trait did, since I knew it was also triggered <laughs> by the hangar pet launch that the ship had, was good enough for me. <laughs> yep, that sounds right. Um, for anyone who cares, uh, the reason the traits may not perfectly synergize if you showed that off is because this is the build I used on the Voth Carrier back when I showed that one mm. off with um, a lot of differences. But I haven't that's dove I deep it. into traits because, you know, uh, I don't want the stream to die. <laughs> that's <laughs> also fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, a bunch of people in chat are saying their messages are getting uh, hit by moderators. Uh, we don't have any moderators signed. The auto moderator. Normally I get a notification. Uh, when uh, something gets auto-modded, and I don't see those notifications, uh, so I'm not sure what's going on. I apologize for that. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, keep, uh, keep asking questions anyway, folks. All right, so um, that's the basic gist of yeah. this this bad boy. So some other just explanations about the ship build. Um, that's so cool. The Fakiri in our <laughs> game use anti-proton weapons if they're things that have weapons, which is why you see them equipped on this ship. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just generic. Fiery red death, stuff. it makes sense. Yeah, it's pretty thematically yeah. on point. Although, space flamethrowers, you should consider that as a weapon set. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. just flamethrowers coming out of my ship at all have, times. Have considered that. Um, just launching just molten rocks through space. I you can, was, call, you can call it a Grethor railgun if you need it to be sciencey. <laughs> I was considering making a set of beam arrays that used fire damage for this ship, <laughs> and I didn't for several reasons, including not wanting to refit them to all the existing ships, not having the time, and Chris not having the time. Right. But I did think about it. Maybe yeah. someday. Maybe next year. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know. Sorry. Apparently, Automod is blocking everything, um, uh, and it's supposed to be showing me stuff that's caught by auto moderator i don't know um mm-hmm. apparently it's it's showing me it's hitting everything that uh yeah show me that show me the detailed stuff thank you hmm. um apparently it's blocking the uh uh the name of the fakiri name because f-e-k means fuck like 
Fuck off, cup! If you've watched Father Ted. <laughs> no, so, I haven't, but, but that's, um, that's amazing. So now, Jet, a very important question from Q Cullen in chat, uh, which leads me to a story. Okay. Um, a year ago, when we were doing the QA handoff for the first Fakiri wintership, uh, <laughs> I explained to Jeremy in detail that I could go to Michael Henry in audio and tell him that the STO team really wanted that ship to play a guitar solo whenever it activated its powers, and no one would stop me until it went live. Mm -hmm. uh, and to which Jeremy, of course, responded, please don't. Mm -hmm. But now, you can't tell me that this shouldn't have a guitar sound effect <laughs> every time it happens. I need it to go, Bwow! when I f when I set off my fire effects yet. You are correct, Mike. I can't tell you that. <laughs> no, uh, uh, guitar solos. Yeah. So bass. for me, the like the really exciting part of the ship was to get to work on the hangar pets, as I mentioned, because they're really unique. It was also really challenging because normally when I'm balancing hangar pets, like I have a baseline, like it's got this many weapons, it has these abilities, it's a fighter, a frigate, a mm -hmm, runabout, mm -hmm. whatever, so it's going to do this well. Uh, yeah, no, none of that applies here. <laughs> uh, the claw swipes are... The, the NPC ones were very clearly... Someone took a ground ability and said, go work in space, and it kind of did. Um, so I had to <laughs> take that and polish it up. The flamethrower was... Uh, so to be fair, I did the same thing for the flamethrower, except <laughs> I also polished it. Mm. Oh. So you know we have the... The good old Romulan reputation ground flamethrower. That's where this started out. <laughs> and that took a lot of work to not perform badly, as in, like, you know, making sure that the AI knew what to do with stuff. Um, right. Like, there's actually a lot of work put into the AI in these hangar pets to make sure that they knew how to use their abilities smartly. Like, mm. the psionic shockwave that you see on the, the ranks, like, the, the advanced and elite versions, they'll only use that if they have at least two enemies that should be hit by it. Um, ah, okay. And so they're not just burning it all the time off in the distance. Right, or the ferocious charge it will only use if it's too far away from its target. Um, <laughs> like, you know, it really loves to do claw swipe because it does a whole lot of damage, and so if it's in range, it's like, all right, let's just pummel this thing to death. <laughs> but it feels like using the flamethrower farther out. So there was a lot of that. And just also the fact that it's decided that the place it wants to stand is literally on top of the enemy it's fighting. <laughs> like, if you leave it to its own accord, you will find out, like, you have a board cube, and here are your <laughs> hanger just pets. clicking on the side, going, rrr, rrr. You guys uh, are best puppies. As opposed to normal mm -hmm. hanger pets, which is like, let's go circle something from a few yeah. kilometers away. Mm -hmm. And like, nope, not here. Now, <laughs> currently, um, these hanger pets can only be used on this ship. Mm -hmm. uh, when are you fixing that so I can use them on all of my ships? <laughs> no. Well, uh, I will fix that when this is the only ship you fly. <laughs> um, so I had some conversations. These fit for the Fakiri. And they make sense in the lore, but we thought... I'm sorry. The decision was made by someone who isn't me and will remain nameless um, <laughs> that they might be... But look at them. ...confusing They're or so immersion-breaking <laughs> or otherwise... You can't tell me that Sean wouldn't want this on the Enterprise F. <laughs> Just <laughs> launching Again, the souls of the damn. I don't damn. think I can't tell would. you that. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you would. <laughs> The decision was made by someone I respect and also am obligated to follow their directives. So, <laughs> there you go. This is not um, one I'm just going to ignore. Cool. Uh, well, we didn't. One thing we didn't have time to do because I was trying to get it all in before I left for vacation was the sh different shields on this blog. So I'll do a couple because um, people were asking. Uh, what's the name of the ship pack you made for item shield pack you made you for me again? Uh, Grant reward table. Instead of giving. I, I never made it an item because I didn't feel like it. It's, it's fair. a summary. But, so you literally can't. Run I know it's 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 frozen right now. Oh, when you type give item, it freezes for five to ten seconds, and you have to wait. I forgot that part. Yeah. yeah. So, Grant reward table. I mean, it's like test reward pack. Test reward pack shields vanity. vanity all all I think that would blow up no uh, I don't think there's a space in reward pack because I don't type the word that way oh so just test reward pack yeah all vanity shields yes yeah, the the experimental weapons is one I have for myself for when I make. There we go. Vanity Blah. shields. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Yeah, we have a few of those in this game. <laughs> yeah, just a few here and there. Uh, all right. Um, chat, throw out some requests. I'm going to put some that I like on there while we're waiting. Uh, where's the Bozeman Titans? Oh, that looks been. good oh, on everything. Where, where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh. Yep. Holy shit. That looks good on almost everything. 
Fuck, that I went way gonna... too far into the gold and not enough into the oh, black. It's awesome. Shut up. I'm with Thomas <laughs> on this one. I was like, sweet. Uh, okay. <laughs> this, this looks like um, Mud's father-in-law's uh -huh. ship in terms of on That's Anthony. why it's great. Yeah. Uh, it's the best ship. <laughs> oh, God. And all the players love it. No. Why? <laughs> all right. Looks like it's in reverse alphabetical order. It's not in alphabetical order. I'll fix that. Uh, S. S is probably around here somewhere. New Romulus. That. And there was a request for I the Section 31, so obviously I'm don't know that it alphabetizes by display name. It does for those shields, weirdly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <sighs> the blue isn't quite as pronounced as it normally is, but the orange mm -hmm. is nice. Well, this this is, is, are just that's part of the ship, yeah. yeah, yeah Again, yeah, yeah. this is going to be, I assume, a very unique ship relative to most of ours, and may handle vanity shields a little bit differently. Obviously, my, the easy way, easiest it, way to find um, that out is to put the uh, new Romulus oh. shield on it and see what it does. Yeah. Yep, that, still keep the orange, the but that's pretty Romulus dope. Shield. That's pretty right. dope right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the best ships with that shield I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. It's... Wow. Somebody requested the uh, breast cancer awareness one, which was just called the pink, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's second row far right. Nope. nope, that's Gamma Synergistic. That's a different pink shield. Yep. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, the Tilly's shield actually looks really great on it. Um, you've already got it equipped on the ship, but um, I had it on earlier, and it gives us this really nice, like, reflective sheen to it. It looks really cool. You may didn't disable it, because that's a little bit harder to notice. Yeah. It's... Yeah, you, you didn't. Oh! Oh! Nice. Oh, my! Oh, dang. <laughs> oh, my! Dang. That's, uh, that's decidedly, like, Someone Blade Runner... <laughs> okay, so related to that, I want to see how the Aegis shields show up. Which Aegis shield? Um, oh, that's right. Either. Okay. Uh, eight four seven two. Yeah, so I fed. cheated when I made these for money. Ooh. I made one that's always fed and one that's always KDF. And ooh, yeah, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. That's very pretty. Let's yeah. see what the KDF one does. The same thing, but red. Yes, and I want red. to see it. <laughs> yes. Oh, see, that's nice. That's actually yeah. just like a nice little bit of highlights for the show. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, what else we got? Someone said Herc. Happy to do that. Herc, Herc will be interesting. Yeah, where are we? H, K, Herc. Oh, interesting. Huh. It was full, a full insect. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's cool. I, um, I, I want to check out the, because the, um, dis, not, is it Discovery? Can you show me the assimilated one? Oh, yeah. That's directly up to the right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Nope. Simulated yeah. regenerative. Hmm. Hmm. That is, I think, probably the least quirky I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, I guess one? it's hard to assimilate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the K KDF Kelvin Divergence Shield looks great on a lot of ships, and this is no exception. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. All right. Any other requests? Emperors. I see an Emperor's request, and then we'll talk about the jellyfish. Peanut butter jellyfish. Peanut, peanut butter, butter jellyfish. jellyfish. Now we, 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 we. No, there we go. There we go. go. This was Thomas's request for this stream <laughs> that we do this. Uh, the Emperor's Vanity Shield doesn't change it that much. It I mean, just means a little it bit goes darker. From one dark gray to, to a slightly, slightly, slightly different, darker gray. <laughs> different. This darker. is the Fakiri who are just like really, really goth. <laughs> there's the hot topic Fakiri, and then there's the Fakiri who. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I lost my words. But anyway, cool. That ship is awesome. I can't wait to fly it. Um, I almost bought it out. Oh, somebody was asking about um, why this ship was a low buy buyout instead of a Zen buyout. Um, uh, that's because in the past you could use low buy to buy out ornaments uh, for these ships, and we wanted to keep that consistent. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a low buy buyout, but it's still prorated. So as you complete it, uh, the amount of low buy you have to spend will go down. On the other hand, if you just buy it out right now, I am slightly happier about that. So mm -hmm. yeah. And then keep playing the winter event. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Um, oh, is that um, you guys? Neither of you guys may know this. Actually, Jet, you might. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. I need to. Oops. Um, the Fakiri ship is it getting added to Fakiri critter groups in the game? I don't think we're updating the critter groups with either of the two custom ones we've made. You should think about it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, as I'm sure you discussed earlier, though, the Fakiri Dreadnought in the game looks very different from the one we just built. Yes. Um, way worse. worse. So we should think about it. The one <laughs> in the game looks way worse. Yes, yes, I agree. All right. So, guys, where's the ship? I don't see it. Yeah. That's one of the... Um, 
so this ship is tiny. Uh, yes. Although oh, and it also he, still has a vanity shield on it's, it. It's tiny. It is also actually a lot bigger than it canonically is. Yes. So it's a one-person shuttle, basically. Right. In, uh, so we're. I think sorry. the canonical size is like thirty meters or twenty meters or something. Yeah. We and took, this is we uh, sized one, it up. Yeah. One twenty, I think, is or one hundred, maybe. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is we're far enough in the future from yeah. even that point that we can say, oh, well, they just remade it and made it right. bigger. Right, yeah. That's sort of my high canon is that this is like jellyfish beta or something. Yeah. Like, like what we did with uh, Kelvin D4X. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. This this ship was another fun ship. Um, I, I really liked working on the, um, the Somerville in this one because it was another case of... I bet I can do this with science. And James <laughs> like, you can't. And I'm like, what? What if I can? <laughs> um, but so, Thomas, tell us a little bit about the design of this this guy. This is, uh, you know, one of the more unique ships we've seen in uh, Star Trek um, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, what was the, I know it was uh, Tobias who worked on this. What was the process of putting it together like? Well, uh, the first thing to say about it is even though it appears in the Kelvin Timeline movie, it is actually a prime timeline ship. That is true. It was, um... Created uh, for Spock to stop the uh, supernova that destroys Romulus in 2387. And, and a supernova we'll likely be hearing more about in Star Trek Picard coming right. this January to CBS All Access. Right. Um, so <laughs> Spock takes the ship back in time with them, uh, and the divergence uh, creates the divergence between the normal prime Star Trek timeline and the Kelvin Star Trek timeline. Yeah. Hence why we called it the Divergence Lockbox. Um, uh, that was such a long brainstorm to get to that name. Yeah. Um, I knew it was always going to be called that because I, it was my idea. I suggested t <laughs> Kelvin t Lockbox 2 Electric Boogaloo, but no one liked it. So anyway, um, so <laughs> in, the, in the Countdown comic preceded the J.J. movie, this was uh, you see this ship being actually designed and built by Geordi. Um, yeah. That comic is unfortunately no longer canon, um, but... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There, uh, there's something in you know we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out when, when yeah. Picard airs and and there's a new countdown for Picard comic. Yep, um, which has uh, some familiar ships in it that right. you might recognize, like right. the Enterprise F just hanging out. Yeah. Well, it's, awesome. the, it's the Odyssey. It's the USS yeah. Verity, which is an Odyssey class yeah. ship. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so it is a prime timeline ship, so it totally fits in STO. It is a ship of the past in STO technically because it's from. Uh, 2387. Uh, so this is an upgraded, upsize version for you that can, you know, compete at the kind of level that we expect an STO ship to compete at. Um, and yeah, Tobias Richter and his crew made this for us. Um, I made the material the ship uses, which was, uh, that was pretty challenging, getting that kind of cobblestone. Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, texture to, to sit right. And you look. never see it in, um... Uh, the movie, like, standing still long enough like this to notice that texture. That's really right, cool. Right, right. I used um, the Eagle Moss uh, images of the ship were really helpful to kind of get good mm -hmm. reference for it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Tobias and his crew made the model for us. And then, of course, there was a lot of work getting the animations uh, to uh, work correctly. We have a video somewhere of uh, the, uh, sounds. the yeah. early yeah. animations of this ship. Uh, if oh. it's sitting up in your um, login screen behind you, just going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, still have that video. Good, yeah. send it to me. I'll put it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and so there are a couple of cool things that happened that uh, Weston did when he animated it, and then we worked with our sound, uh, sound guy, Drew, um, to uh, increase the kind of pitch and frequency of the sound as you go faster because the uh, engines actually rotate faster as well. And then Ian oh, Richards cool. made some custom trail effects because it has a very distinct trails in the movie too. So there was a lot of uh, cross-discipline work on the ship to make sure it matched you know, what you would expect from it uh, from watching the movie and made, made it feel special and unique. Uh, because it is a pretty cool little unique ship. Yeah. Um, it does have all the Vulcan ship materials on it, including the the material from the most from last year's Vulcan ship, um, which is pretty cool. <laughs> have it take off and, a little uh, bit. Someone was asking if the head rotates. Yes, it, it does. It does. Um, it's a little. <laughs> uh, you kind of just have to watch the body because the head will just rotate any direction. We. We sort of briefly talked about trying to get it only rotate in the direction that you're turning, but we could we couldn't get that to work. So, ultimately, uh, the best thing to watch for like what your banking direction is is the central body because that is your butt. Yeah, yeah, your butt because uh, that will follow your 
that one actually follows your instructions. Yeah. Um, so Wraith Shadow was asking, um, oh, you talked about how, you know, the ship is not, uh, uh, it's sized up from where it was canonically. Um, what's the decision process like for, you know, with ships that are either too big, like the Universe class, or too little, like this ship? How did we sort of decide what feels like the right size for the game? Well, um, I think we actually did end up using the cannon size for the universe class. We did we we tried it out and it was okay. So the as far as I remember, no, the Enterprise J is actually book. the cannon size it should be. But um, you know, there I think there will be uh, or are other examples of. Oh, could um, you go? Could someone wave their hand behind the screen? Yeah. Excuse me. There are other examples of scaling down a ship, and definitely other examples of scaling up a ship, like the D four. Um, from the Kelvin movies that Jet mentioned. And essentially, my, my philosophy is simply um, as, as big as it needs to be to be a viable like capital ship, but as small as we possibly can so it doesn't completely ruin the feel of the ship itself. Yeah. And that's sort of where, where I landed on here, which I think this is like 100, 110 meters or something. But, um, but yeah, um, it's a pretty simple calculus of just like, okay, well... If this is not a small craft, you know, if we're not releasing it as a small craft, then it, you know, in the hundred meter range is basically as low as we can go. So we'll okay. start there. And, That's cool. Yeah. Um, someone was saying in chat, I don't know if this goes to either of you folks, but apparently when you put the competitive engines on this ship, they're like yeah, double the size I, of the ship. I'm going to take a look at that tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. Uh, for anyone who wants some context on this ship, I believe the outer ring of the saucer or of the starbase here is about as, as big as the Enterprise J. Because I've oh, okay. a whole bunch of ships against the Starbase. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's it's f still fairly small compared to your large ships, as Mike was commenting yeah. on. Yeah. It's real It's scary, just, yeah. you know, flyable. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Um, someone said, I'm hoping for a Kelvin version of the original Bird of Prey when they do Star Trek Four. Me too. There was a design for it on the internet, and it's really pretty, and I want Thomas to make it for me. It doesn't even have to be in the game, Thomas. You can just make it for me to fly around. <laughs> all right, well... <laughs> Get right on that, please. I've got um, lots of time right now. Yep, so, so much time. <laughs> Same. <laughs> so much time. Oops, not that. Um, all right, so talk to us a little bit about what, how this ship is designed, how it's meant to work, and what build you put together for it. So uh, can you mouse over the console for the ship? Because I can mouse over the first. console for the ship. Is it this one? It is. Yay. I got so, it right. There was a, a lot of talk about the console for the ship. It did one incredibly iconic thing, which was anything involving red matter. Yep. That's why it comes with the red matter capacitor device, incidentally. Yep. Um, but we wanted to use that because it was a really unique visual. It was a really cool effect. And then the question, there was a couple of questions of, one, how isn't this just gravity well the console? And so that's where uh, a couple of components of the design came from. The coolest of which, in my opinion, is the fact that it literally draws in nearby anomalies. Like, if you launch your gravity well and you launch this, your gravity well will chase this. And that was... It's getting drawn towards it. Um, and that was one of the, the really cool things. Uh, specifically, I set up the hierarchy. Uh, if It will always draw in your and your teammates' bridge officer anomalies unless they have anomaly leash set. If, if they have anomaly leash active and they don't have a target, it'll still go to this. And if it's your thing and you have anomaly leash it's still going to go towards this while it's out um but we figured if you have anomaly leash we you still want control of it and you don't want somebody else's random console stealing your stuff mm. so i put in a lot of work making sure those all played correctly together <laughs> and it also leaves other people's stuff alone uh if like if you're on say a pvp map or one of the maps where the enemies will launch gravity wells it won't draw those in because the theory was I just targeted 10 things at this area. This should be a good area to go and shouldn't randomly steal hostile gravity wells. So there was a, a couple of sacrifices of realism made for gameplay's sake, but that console was super fun to get to build and the effects was also the coolest thing ever when I got it the first time from Ian, who I also did these effects. Mm -hmm. Ian did a great job other than the fact that the effects... Um, also covered up the entire screen, <laughs> which was what I requested and accurate to the show, but we had to work so that you could see a little bit more of what was going on. Yeah. Okay. okay, so tell us a little bit about the trait. So the trait was... Um, uh, the, the ship was really tiny, really evasive, and so that was kind of where the idea came from of let's make it hard to get shot, and so oh, it gives you bonuses for maneuvering near things. Um, so... 
if someone placate or if someone critically hits you and you're too close, it placates them. Um, I think there was supposed to be a lockout on the street, and there it didn't make it in for launch. But I think it's patch, going out tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, I saw it once, the patch notes. Yeah. Um, so they don't shoot you, get out of the placate, shoot you again, get immediately placated. Yeah. It's probably not relevant against NPCs who won't crit you that often, but. Um, yeah. And then the other part is when they're not critically hitting you, you have a large damage resistance bonus to people that are too close, close to you to anyway. You. So it's just like, sounds like a great trait for my ship, and I need yeah. it. Just go go walk up to the person who's going to punch you in the face and be like, ha, I don't care. Yes. This is too difficult I know to hit me. <laughs> All right, well, let's get some uh, some fight on going on with this thing, and yeah. you can talk me through what it. What are the science consoles that it's got? So the science consoles that this ship has equipped are the Fleet Research Lab consoles, if I remember correctly. Yes, good. Yeah. Um, these consoles just always have a special place in my heart. Um, mm. So when I, I I applied to be on Stowe's QA team um, many years ago, and the really funny thing for me, I was applying to be a person who knew numbers and math and was good at that and invested yeah. in the community, and the day I had my phone interview was the day that players unlocked these consoles on live, and for anyone who was around back then, you might remember the bug where the damage buff on them stacked with itself. Oh no! <laughs> and so uh, I learned a lot of things about how large of numbers the combat log records. <laughs> as we would hit things for I think I vaguely 10 remember to the that. 18 yeah. <laughs> in, as an instance of damage. Oh. So, so I got this question asked by Maria Plesser. was like, so do you know of any, like, interesting bugs on live and i and we just all started laughing about it <laughs> oh that's great yeah all right. um, who, do want, who do we want to fight um who's got a lot of um i don't know, just, i i like fighting the borg they're a fairly simple okay. critter group i was gonna say herc herc they have a lot of small Ooh, ships yeah herc, herc are sounds also good. all right good. where did they yeah. go just don't pick send kathy for this ship please there's no herc on oh here. that's right herc aren't on here because i hadn't the the right, way we'll we take do some most more of our Herc pirates. content is by specifically spawning in a large number of the small rank NPCs, mm. which doesn't work with this map, because I'm just saying, hey, go find out what the players said they want the active NPC to be, and spawn them in whatever configuration they just told you they want to spawn. Right. So making it custom for Herc was basically doubling the workload of everything, and that didn't seem worth it compared yeah, to sure. everything else, which is just add a contact option and a tiny string of text. Um, all right, so tell me a little bit about this, because um, uh, I know we've got this, yeah, that missile launcher that just went off. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that guy. So that is a super fun uh, little torpedo. It's, uh, oh for anyone who remembers the Kelvin Lockbox. Where did box, you put invasive maneuvers? <laughs> it's in the dead there center there of the it ship. Is. Oh, okay. Um, that that lockbox contained within the Kelvin weapon pack, which has Kelvin photon torpedoes, which are a lot like a normal photon torpedo, except they recharge two seconds faster. Mechanically, it's identical to one of those, <laughs> um, but it has visual effects that are not... It might be easiest to show those off just against some test dummies on this map. Fine. Just to... And then let's go shoot some other stuff afterwards, but to show off the torpedo. Yeah, right. That makes sense. Uh, how do I spawn test dummies? Just active combat scenarios at the top. The first option in there is test dummies. Spawn test dummies. Set number... Pick like five or something. All right. Five. Yeah. Cool. Ah, uh, test dummies. Yeah. This random I show. use this map all the time. That's half of why I built it. Yeah. Um, so hit, I use it too. hit the torpedo spread three marker. Okay. Because then it gets... Um, Crazy. And then... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. that's fun. <laughs> Your ship has dealt a million torpedo damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would believe it. Um, and of course, this is a pilot ship, so you can do that kind of thing. Nice. Which I'm sure was also fun for Weston to animate. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I don't think you had to do anything extra for the pilot stuff on this. It was just getting the... For him, spinning stuff isn't... If it just spins, it's not too hard. Mm. Um, Although I think there were some bugs and stuff he had to figure out, but yeah. Man, you can really get the feel of like being like a World War II fighter pilot in this ship. Yeah. Yeah. There's... Yeah, it was it was really a lot of fun to get to put together all the different parts from all of the art related stuff that I was mostly just watching and being like, okay, cool, you know what the ship's doing, cool, great. As long as you're aware of stuff, I trust you. Right. And right, and so then I've all the created a singularity. Yep. And then if you go click on one of the other ones with the uh, 
the console? Yep, just gotta turn around. Yep. Oh. It, it launches this little canister of red matter. And then boom! And then, and the other thing it does that, as you watch is it pulls them in in like it, literally it's jerking it like it's only actively pulling them about uh, a tenth of the time that it's active just in intervals of once a second that's cool um, this is a really fun ship to which fly which gives it a really like distinct feel from a lot of the other stuff that's just a slow steady pull like the gravimetric induction platform or a timeline collapse or gravity well or any of the other places we've done it's a thing in space that pulls things together <laughs> um, yeah. all right well let me get uh rid of these guys well if I... you leave combat this is what you need to do for that off i go mm -hmm. uh, augmented dictator games we are aware that it, uh, how nice it would be to have this proving ground on holodeck we'd like to put it there we're working mm -hmm. on it yeah there's some stuff we have to work out first. We want to put it on console, too, because, honestly, we know how useful it is. Yeah, uh, especially the parsing functions for console. Um, yeah. Yeah, so part of it is I need to do more things to this map, and I'm busy working on the bundle that I'm not talking much about. Um, <laughs> we didn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a word in Just, there that you this, used <laughs> yeah, that we hadn't used whole, before. Sorry. It's all right. A bunch of stuff. It's a... It's a bundle of work is all I meant, <laughs> because mm -hmm. everything I do that is complicated is like that. Yeah. But, sorry. It's all right. I'll fire you later. I don't have the authority to do that, but, I, you know. I, mm, yeah, but that didn't stop you from making the... Oh, it did stop you from putting guitar sounds on the other ship. That was Not funny. yet. Yeah. Uh, so there's I could just seriously walk. I could just walk up to his office. Hey, Michael, hey, Michael Henry. You know they said yeah. that you need guitar solos on this ship. Can you just get that added in? And he'd just yeah. do it within a day, and and nobody would notice. Justin would look at it on the check-in list and go, "Well, somebody must have requested this," <laughs> and that and that would be it. There'd yeah. be guitar solos. See, the thing uh, is, though, Mike, I don't think you know how much I read the check-ins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not saying I would stop you. I'm just saying I would notice. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything in here with me? No. Uh, yeah, well, well the there's notes. the entire web, so if you hit fire at will, it'll probably kill things. Okay. But, well, A, that's fire at will strategy in general, and B, that's how you get out of these. Yeah. I've never actually gotten trapped in one before. <laughs> and usually they just miss me. Hmm. Or another player has destroyed them before they can actually form up. Yeah, so as a scout ship, this is um, really flexible in terms of what you can do with it. Um, it has a commander science and then a whole bunch of universal seats, so that kind of really opens the ship up. So you probably want to do something science related. You could build it like full science, or you could build it like more like what I did with this ship, which is like a tactical science blend, or you could make it like kind of a speed tank with some science stuff, because the trait helps you not get killed, and you got a whole bunch of seats to get heals and resistance buffs and whatnot. You can you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this ship, and I was excited about that. Yeah. All right, request some shields, folks. We're going to throw some on there. Um... Oh, God. What's up? I'm just looking at chat. Don't mind me. Oh. Uh, all right. Um, anything interesting in there? No. <laughs> anything I want to hear no, about? No, nothing at all. <laughs> uh, there's no bridge um, yet. Uh, unfortunately, you want me to put the Fakiri one on here? I don't think the Fakiri one's in this reward pack because it's too new. Yeah, probably not because I know I haven't updated that in yep. too long. Sorry. All right. Well, you uh, clearly they asked for the Ferengi, obviously. Actually, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. fly to a better lit spot over by the starbase. Because yeah. that's how lighting works in space. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's going so fast. All right, slow mm -hmm. down, slow down, mm -hmm. slow down. Mm -hmm. it, it is. I, um, <laughs> well, the ship has Mark 15 engines and skill points and a whole bunch of other stuff. Someone wants the Vulcan logicians, and so the Vulcan logicians, they should get... Where did the... I... Okay. Ta-da! Ta-da! I was close to correctly timed. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, that's actually nice. Uh, how did we end up in darkness again? I just flew to the sun. I thought this was the... I don't know. This map is, is normally pretty well lit. I'm not sure why yeah. the ship has gotten so dark. I think it might have gotten slightly less well lit recently, but I'm not sure. Okay, well, anyway, it looks great. Actually, as the ship stops moving, it's darker. That's weird. But anyway, that looks great. Mm -hmm. You can see it here. That looks nice. It's kind of moving back and forth in there. Mm -hmm. What else do you guys want to see? Borg. All right, I think that means the assimilated one. Mm -hmm. 
which is nobody ever wants to see the Omega Shields because people are boring, and the adapted Mako and the Makos. No, oh, all right, that's pretty cool. That actually just looks like that's it was assimilated. Also, that's nice. really concerning. I don't actually want the Borg throwing red matter at people. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. That is the last thing I want. Well, I well actually, no. The last thing I want is in the uh, Bozeman. 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 All right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, dang. Oh, yeah. That oh, looks oh. great. <laughs> oh, 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 dang. Yeah. Uh, section 31, of course, because everybody loves their goth shields. You heard me. I'm going to put the fake on real quick. Oh. Still pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Works better on ships that have some darker stuff, I think. But All right, There it is. <laughs> Stealth what? ship mode activated. Yeah, it's dark. This is like that ep that episode of the X Men cartoon where they put Wolverine in a black and purple costume for no reason, <laughs> and it was awesome. I want to see the new car shields, Mike. New car shields, are yeah. Well, it, you were those. Your mom. Hmm? Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's actually really cool. Yeah. Yeah. They that's neat. Looks, it looks like a techno alien technology. Mm. Yeah. Missing the yellow bits I'm used to, but that's. Uh, I'm gonna stick. Or I'm gonna stick the KDF Discovery Vanity Shield on it because. Nice. Yeah. That's actually really neat. <laughs> um, Thomas, someone was asking in chat, would you ever consider making these, um, uh, like the cannon size version of these? Whoa. Um, as uh, pets for a ship. Um. Uh, we we could do that. Um, we'd have to you know find a, a good spot for it. America. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean you know we don't we don't make those kinds of things that often, but it's something we could consider. Someone asked for slime devils, asking you shall receive. Yeah. Nice. I love purple and green so much as a color combination, but for some reason it doesn't work for me on starships. Like this looks really nice. But are you like, Palma? I'm I'm serious. Am I what? Palma. Palma what? is a, a player who plays our game who makes pink and green outfits all the time, and it's like bright pink and bright green. and Oh, whoa. 8472 does some weird stuff. Oh, yeah, because it's got engine trail effects attached to the shield. That's really cool, just looking at it idling in the face. <laughs> I like wow, that a lot. I've never seen it do quite that. Though. That's really cool. Sweet. It's you like are a just poison covered ship. in icky goo. This is <laughs> what it does. Uh, but, competitive yeah. regalia. I don't think. Is there one called regalia? Yes. It, all the PvP shields have the same visuals. Yeah. That's why there's only one in this bundle. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's actually super nice. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's also not super oversized. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not like the engines. No, I kind of want to. Yeah, we need to look in that. I'm actually not quite yeah. sure why it's uh, doing that. Right, we got a Kel request for the Kelvin. Um, I don't know which Kelvin he means, so I'll do both. Here's the Fed version. Nice. Here's the KDF version. Ooh, that's really nice, especially with the blue refl reflections. Mm. Oh, that's really cool. I'm just gonna stare at that for a minute since none of my co-hosts are saying anything. <laughs> yeah, I'll just well, keep talking about how pretty Klingon things are. I mean, because they're better than Federation things. Yeah, but they're general. not Romulan. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, but they're not Romulan. Uh, all right. Um, someone sorry, wants the Homer Simpson reactor control shield. I don't um, think that exists. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are they talking about? I don't know. Can you put on the one that's true to the right? I forget its name, but... The Lucari? Yes. I just... Tron. Oh. Yes, oh, God, cool. that's nice. <laughs> yes. Oh, I need to fly that around for a minute. Whoa. Uh, not sure what you did there, but okay. Oh, that's real nice. Yes. Pretty cool. Oh, man. Yes, it is. Oh, man. Oh, that's how the ship was meant to be. <laughs> I, I actually... Don't think so, but it no, should no, have been no, how it, it was meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, somebody said the Romulan Tier Six Vanity, which is I think called the Romulan. It's not the Romulan Advanced Prototype, right? It's the oh god, help anybody! All right, we'll put this one on. Help. All right, well that looks pretty cool. All right, well, sorry, I'll leave my songs in the you know. <laughs> 
before I was born. In the before time. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, folks, thank you very much for joining me. I think we've yeah. we've pretty much covered everything we need to cover about the uh, these lovely ships. Um, and folks, I uh, hope you're enjoying the winter event and everything else that's going on. Um, and uh, uh, it's good to be back. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Kapla. Go on. Do the third one. What?